Today we want to take you on a tour of our little forest, show you what kind of mushrooms grow here, and how we can take care of the trees. But I also want to talk to you about something else. Recently we received our first hate comment. And we actually celebrated, because that means that our channel is growing. But it still set a lot of thoughts in motion. And that's what I want to talk to you about. Whether we put our life publicly out there or not, we are always at risk for being criticized. It's a natural part of life among humans, who each have their own opinions, and more importantly, their own stories. The key is to notice the useful criticism and throw away the rest. Criticism can come from anywhere. Even our loved ones will sometimes give us a hard time, and that's usually because they love us and want us to be safe. But their criticism is based on their own stories. Something they wouldn't dare to do, so they don't think you should. We all have our stories. Our version of how the world is put together, what is true, and how we see different situations. Just the other day, I was firing up the old stove in the kitchen. We haven't been using it that much, and I always mess things up in the cottage. So when I got the stove going, I was really proud, and I couldn't wait to show Julian. Then he came downstairs, and before entering the kitchen, he said, What are we burning down here? With a smile on his face. I tried to laugh a little, but I actually felt a little bit hurt inside, because I had messed up again. Or had I? Did you notice what my story was in this situation? I always mess things up in the cottage? That's simply not true. It's a fear I have, a story. And Julian has another story. So after thinking things through, I went up and got my story straight. Of course Julian wasn't saying anything to mock me. He just noticed the funny smell and had no idea what I was standing in the kitchen telling myself. We are most vulnerable to criticism on the areas where we have a shame or a fear. For example, if a woman is insecure, if she's good enough as a mom, then if anybody says something about her parenting, it goes straight to the wound and feels extra hurtful. It doesn't matter if the comment is true or not. She will begin questioning herself. While if the critic had said something about her cooking, which she had accepted a long time ago wasn't her specialty, then the comment would just bounce off and she wouldn't care. You can't go through life without being criticized. As the saying goes, to avoid criticism, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. But then you will be criticized for being lazy. We are very selective about who we take feedback from. We are always aware that people have different stories. And then we go on following our hearts working through each shame, fear, or limiting story as they pop up. I have never felt so strong. Good morning. It feels so good to be back. The last time we were here was uh, on Midsummer. That was two months ago. Now we're in late August. And um, we hope that you enjoyed our Midsummer video <laughs> that we posted some time ago. <sighs> it's Sunday and we are going to Lundschild to check on our other cottage. There have been people here in both of the cottages all summer, families renting the houses. And uh, now we're going to to Lindschild to check if everything is all right, maybe clean a bit up. Yeah, so uh, I hope that you are doing well and that you can enjoy our videos so far. <laughs> it just, <laughs> it's just amazing to be back. Thank you so much for being here. It 
It is so amazing to come back and see all of the changes in the garden and the nature. Like here, for example, the pear tree is blooming and has started to grow some pears. And a little surprise that we came back to was that um, maybe you remember we dug up some stones, some rocks we dug up from the lawn and that created some huge holes in the ground. I chose to fill them up with, well, earth, but also some of the kitchen leftovers. So I put some um, uh, vegetable um, some seeds, some avocados, some old potatoes and just put it in the holes and now look at this! <laughs> Something is growing! So this rock was in the ground and created a huge, this huge hole and now something is coming up here some of my kitchen leftovers. <laughs> I can't wait to see what it is. Maybe you can recognize this. Some of you. It's beautiful. Maybe a potato or something. Are we ready to go? I'm ready. Okay, let's go. It looks like somebody's here. So I guess we read the booking calendar wrong. <laughs> I'll just quietly leave again. <laughs> this is actually our own forest. So we are gonna take a little look and see if there are some mushrooms now that we're here. Out there. As you can see, the, the trees are, have fallen down by the wind. We have one up there as well, a big one. So we should actually uh, cut this one down because it's pretty dangerous to have this tree falling down on us. I made a little bridge here for the tractor so I could drive both um, up there on the road and down here. It's uh, fun to see how everything is growing. This area here was uh, almost open when I bought the, the cottage. So it was actually more like a grass area than a forest area. I planted uh, 1,500 trees and uh, these are some of them. Those. This one, and those. So they have grown from yeah two meters to four meters for the last twelve years. I just love that we have this little piece of forest that is ours, so that we can be sure that it isn't cut down or that we can preserve this piece of forest. <sighs> I know that Julian dreams of having more forest, that he would love to just spend hours out here and make paths and there's, it's a whole... Oh, there's some mushrooms. It's a whole science to keep the trees growing so some trees you cut down and some you let grow and <laughs> I am still learning about all of that. The stream has a little fall so we can, can hear it. I just got me in the mud. <laughs> Money. 
here we could have a little bench. A what? A little bench here. A bench, yeah. Hmm. So right now we are focusing on Aegeness, the cottage that we live in now, and fixing it up. Mm. And our plan is to, when everything is looking really good there, we will move over here, fix up this cottage, and spend more time in the forest. And I would just love to, yeah, like you said, make benches and pathways so that you can go on adventures in this yeah. forest. Maybe you could build a little house here as well. Oh. For, uh, for ourselves. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think we found some mushrooms. What do you have there? Uh, it's called a bahat. What did you say about uh, cutting them off with a knife? It's just you can take off the the dirt and stuff like that, so you don't put all the dirt in the basket. Mm. So, I think it's a Kalyu hen. Really? It's uh, the finest wah hat you can get. But oh, it's, uh, what's the problem? That's been eaten. <laughs> oh. So, huh. somebody came before us. Yeah, but it's really. Mm. It smells delicious. Try and smell. <clears throat> Mushroom. <laughs> but when there's one, maybe there's more. Yeah. I have really come to appreciate going into the woods, picking mushrooms, mostly because they are so pretty. <laughs> there are so many of them that we can't eat, but they are still so beautiful. So I really enjoy taking pictures and filming them. <laughs> but actually going out to pick mushrooms that we have to bring home and eat is for me still a difficult treasure hunt. <laughs> <laughs> because I think it's so difficult to find them. <laughs> Julian is like a hawk finding them. He can just spot them from miles. <laughs> and I'm still practicing. So I just look at all of the mushrooms, taking pictures and love seeing all the different kinds. Julian has been picking mushrooms with his family since he was a child. So he knows these lands and knows the good places and knows where they like to grow and what places that people come first to pick them and everything. <laughs> so here we have a uh, fine example on how we have not managed the forest because there's dead trees like these. They uh, don't get any sun because all the other trees are bigger. They have to have some more space and the space is been given to them by cutting down some of the trees like here we have a tree here and we have a tree here and this one is not good because it's not uh. <laughs> this is a really really bad example because when i looked up this tree was dead <laughs> <laughs> So this area here, almost all the pine trees die. You can see because the stream down there where we were before, there has been branches and stuff like that who has held up the water, so it has just rised. So the, this area was almost a little pond with water and pine trees not happy for uh, all that water the these ones those are happy for it uh, but the pine trees are not so i have been more aware of the stream look at it so there will not this will not happen again because it's yeah it's kind of dumb to to destroy so many trees so 
So there's always something to do in the forest. So now we are back where we start. There is one mushroom that I can easily spot and it is the most beautiful one and the most poisonous one. <laughs> and you should never eat this. Can you see it? Leave a comment when you have found it. It is called Rød Fluesvamp, Red Fly Mushroom. Maybe you know the name in English. It is the one that Super Mario gets super strong and big from eating. Do not eat this one. It has been a wonderful day. After we were in the forest looking at mushrooms, we went to another forest to pick some mushrooms and my mushroom picking skills have improved since the last time. <laughs> I did not pick all of these, we did it together mm. and we shared a basket so there is no way of telling who picked the most. <laughs> But I think it might have been 50-50. We can say that. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a great experience to actually spot the mushrooms this time and not just walk around and not see anything. Mm. Now I could like see them underneath the, the moss and they were everywhere. So <laughs> we were out for 45 minutes and got a full basket of canterelles and the big one called Kaljohan. Yeah. yeah. Now we are on an evening walk uh, to do a little photo shoot with the mushrooms to put on Instagram. I think it's a little bit too old. Too old? How can you yeah. tell? It's, it's very brown. Put it back. <laughs> we have to be quick about it because the mosquitoes are all over us. <laughs> Should we do some portraits? Portrait with the uh, mushrooms. With me? Oh. <laughs> and the mushrooms. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 